This is an experiment done with very clean things. What you will first see is a dirty surface, which is dirtied with these spherical particles sitting on it, flowing along a channel wall. Now, I will apply a potential to this dirty channel and look what happens if I apply um, the potential. And do you see what happens from the bottom side? Now, just to give you a little clue, the basic idea is, have you ever seen the heat exchanger downstream from an HTS when it gunks up? Um, would you give us a little chance of getting a little slice of that system to test if we can get successful with this kind of a technology? This will keep heat exchangers clean, is how I see things. This would keep membrane surfaces clean, the, the way how I think. I'll give you another little example. Um, if I tell you that you deal with dewatering, desalting, demulsification of bitumen products um, a lot, if I give you a tiny microchip that tells you what happens with these difficult to break micron sized water drops, and I can tell you the dosage of demulsifiers with a precision, which looks like this. Look at the x-axis here, if you can read the numbers, this is in units of parts per million, and I can give you sensitivity about the demulsifier dosage in a range of telling you that the optimal dosage is 55 ppm. I am doing something which if you are in this demulsifying business, you would possibly know that the idea of demulsification is that this is typically diluted bitumen dilbit that you will get with some oil drops in it, sorry, water drops in it, to break them, you need to break the interfacial oil film between them. There's a huge demulsifier market, which basically tries to design chemicals that weakens the interface between these two droplets and coalesce the droplets. But what's the common test of, way of testing this? The industry standard is this test, bottle test. You take bottle test, or if you are impatient, you throw the bottles into the material into a centrifuge and do it quicker. And you get these phase separation experiments, which tells you how much water you have dewatered. Question is, can you tell me convincingly that you have coalesced the water versus you have flocculated the water and you have gotten a rag layer? The idea here is that the little method that I have talked about, I do it one droplet at a time. And when you pop this droplet, um, you will see a very controlled way, which we do in a microchip. And this is all automated. I can throw it in a slipstream from your plant to give an online. I hope this will, yes. So that's a drop popping. I will discuss the technology. There's a patent. We can cover everything. But all I'm saying you is, yes, I do identify things that can give sensitivity about coalescence to a level of 50 ppm. Question is, are we there yet with any of these technologies? Uh, no, unless we get an opportunity to build a big cluster of con concerted effort where you figure out that they are really solving your problems, you give the university students a little chance to test these things out and eventually come up with a solution for you. The value of that solution is not solving your problem. The value of that solution is to take these ideas and make this Alberta's ideas that we can throw into every refinery in the deep injection wells and other places all over the world. Um, we can be leaders. These are just for your thoughts, because my idea doesn't end in one or two little things. What happens if you have these tiny nanoliter volume reactors that are thousands of plug flow reactors? It's a very common thing. I can create any size, any flow rate reactor for you. Can you find a use of testing your catalysts in liquid systems or something like that? Um, PVT measurements. How many of you have looked at these big drums going around in rockers for three months and you are collecting PVT data? Um, I don't know if you can see a tiny draw, uh, red dot uh, right around there that's illuminated with the laser light. Well, what we do is simply, that's the size, a graticule, which had 40 microns. So this droplet that you are seeing is actually a hardesty heavy crude 
which we have levitated a 100 micron drop, and we can keep it levitated in any environment and show you how the mass and volume is changing with time. Does this speed up your PVT measurement? Can I throw in an emulsion there and see what's happening within the emulsion as it is coalescing in a tiny volume? These ideas, I guarantee you, are not in any way less than what we see in world-class universities and world-class research centers. But I tell you, we are developing it right here in Alberta. But we need a chance. We need the leadership of the biggest industry of the world to come in and just give me half a day of your life. And I will definitely show you how much the people who I am trying to sell can deliver to you. So to conclude, I am not pushing my standard microfluidic business idea that is normally applied to point of care or biodiagnostic market. I'm not giving you a throw away chip and I'm not creating a business model like that. I am asking you for your support, which will create greater wealth for Alberta and for us all to really reap for the next 70 years. And the people that I am really trying to sell are my research group, these amazing people, if they didn't take my crummy ideas and spend days and night to convert them into reality, and they didn't care, they were mechanical engineers, but they were doing emulsion chemistry for me. I am immense, immensely and eternally grateful to them, and I would beg on the streets of Calgary to keep them in my lap. Um, and I would like to thank my partners, my mentors, my funding agencies who have made every dream of mine fulfilled while I have been working at U of A for the last 10 years. And thank you, Ken, again for giving me this platform of speaking to, in front of the most powerful industry that represents Alberta. Thank you very much.